How you fellas doing? Hope you got some good plans this weekend. Got a little bit of work we're gonna do on the CJ7. I'm gonna go ahead and talk you through that. Remember to like and subscribe. Leave some comments down in the squawk box. That helps these videos get moved up in the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for the support. All right, what do Jeep oil leaks and bad politicians have in common? Well, there's always gonna be a couple but you should definitely get rid of the worst ones. So we're gonna go after the pan gasket today. And while we're in there, we're gonna swap out the oil pump for the Melling high volume version. I'm gonna use the Felpro uh, Permadry silicone gasket. I've had good luck with these before on other trucks. Um, I think it'll slow the leaking on that. And then while we're in there, because we got the pan off, I'm gonna go ahead and put on a, a new high volume oil pump. I don't know if it's been replaced, but I'm gonna replace it again since I'm in there and it's, you know, it's not that much money. All right, let's plan our attack here. Gonna have to pull the crank position sensor. Gonna have to pull the passenger side motor mount. Gonna have to pull the starter. And we're gonna have to pull the cross tie bar there, or however you wanna call that. Before you begin the real work, make sure you've procrastinated for between 30 and 45 minutes. Just another example of how you'll need every tool in your garage to do even simple projects. Here's the uh, engine hoist being used for the removal of the passenger side motor mount so we can drop the oil pan. Uh, I also had an issue with where I was missing one of the bolts and uh, my mount wasn't quite aligned to the block. So I'll fix that while I'm in there. But uh, uh, again, you know, you're gonna need every tool you own to do any kind of job, simple or complicated. I cleaned the starter, so I'm putting it in an easy bake oven just to dry the windings out, make sure I get all the water out of it. You can see I've got the oil pan off. As always, I recommend you clean it and then add some paint to it. That's so you can demonstrate that you've done some maintenance. That way when the next fella's interested in buying this pile of, I mean uh, Jeep, the uh, Jeep, when he's interested in buying the Jeep, uh, you know, he can see you've, you've turned some wrenches. Here's a new oil pump. This is the Jeep 4.0 high volume oil pump. What you do to use it in the 4.2 application is you swap over the pickup tube. You see this pickup tube's a slightly different shape. This oil pump's about 40 bucks cheaper than the uh, Melling high volume burn for this. I'm not sure what the internal differences are or why Melling charges you more, but I can see from the forums that guys just swap these in and there's no issue. <clears throat> All right, gonna keep working. All right, you can see we got the new oil pump in there. You can see I started cleaning some of the gasket mounting surface, but I just wanted to take this opportunity to mention that, you know, gasket's only gonna seal as good as the surface prep you did. It's a lot like auto body work, right? It's all in the foundation, it's all in the prep work. It's not in the final application of paint or the final application of the gasket where you get the sealing, it's the prep work. All right, gonna keep going. In the spirit of procrastination, let's take the old oil pump apart. All right, so there's the top plate. Here's the two rotors. They seem to be rotating fine. Looks like it's still got a good meshing pattern there. All right, pulled this one out. This is the one that uh, slots in with the bottom of the distributor rotor. And this one came off that shaft. I'm not sure if the shaft's supposed to pull up or if the rotor's supposed to pull up. But anyways, there's the rotor and there's the shaft. So like I said, they don't they don't look bad, you know. Hard to know if this is a high volume or not, or hard to know if I was really having any problems or not. But uh, yeah, that's what the inside of a Jeep oil pump looks like. There's the, uh, I don't know if that's the pressure relief valve or the relief valve, but there you go. I decided to paint the oil pan with high temp wrinkle finish. I'm going to take a minute to try to strengthen up the bar that ties the motor mounts together on the CJ7. The purpose this serves is to keep the motor mounts from spreading outboard as the weight of the motor comes in and hits that, nine, uh, that 45 degree angle. So I'm going to put some weld on the corners of these uh, bends and that should stiffen this up a little bit. Before starting the motor, take a minute to review all the things you disconnected and disassembled just as a double check. Uh, don't get too excited about getting the motor running again because chances are you're going to have a leak from the oil pan gasket anyways. You're going to need to take half of it back apart. So take this opportunity to look the motor over and see if you can find any of those mistakes before you hop in there and start it up. Save yourself throwing some tools, 
save yourself throwing some part numbers and uh, maybe even save yourself some headache. Once you've started the Jeep and you confirm there's no big leaks, go ahead and let it go through a heat cycle. And then what you want to do is check the uh, bolt torque on all of your oil pan bolts. All right, there's the cover off. Oh man, if I could just describe the smell to you. Tell you what, it's like a skunk's butthole. There you can see the witness mark for the fill level. So this had the proper amount of fluid in it. All right, two things to fix with this diff cover. One, we've got one of these bolt holes it needs to be uh, <clears throat> wallowed out. And two, we've got contact with the tie rod here. So what we'll do is we'll just grind off part of this cast cover. It'll still be stronger than the stamp cover. And then we'll hog that out so that way we can get the last bolt in. The rest line up pretty good, but that one's off by at least a quarter of an inch. All right, gonna keep working. All right, got the diff cover on there okay. Had to do some clearancing on the, uh, the bulge there. I don't know how well you can see that, but worked out good. So we got full turning radius back and uh, sealed up pretty good with the lube blocker gasket. So happy with the result.